hey hey welcome to my channel igcs e0460 and this is geography for cambridge uh, today we're going to be looking at another topic of section c and this is uh, development and let's get started development is a process of change that affects people's lives involving an improvement in the quality of life so I don't want you to think about development as just an increase in the country's uh, financial resources, but it also looks at the quality of life that people are living. So knowing that different countries are at different levels of development, we categorize uh, countries into two. Uh, more economically developed countries, and this is abbreviated as MEDC, and then also less economically developed countries, which is abbreviated as LEDC. Let's look at the descriptions of this. Uh, so an MEDC is a sovereign state that has highly developed economy with advanced technology and uh, developed infrastructures. And examples here include Japan, Switzerland, Norway, and uh, USA, among other countries. So you might be asked a question to give the characteristics of MEDC. You would say that it is a sovereign state, uh, which means that the country has the capacity to make its own policies and its own decisions. And MEDCs are also uh, have uh, highly developed economies, which means that they have a lot of financial resources. And then they have advanced technology and also they have developed infrastructure such as roads and uh, railways among others. On the other hand, LEDCs, you could describe an LEDC as a non-industrialized, a poor country that is seeking to develop its resources by industrialization. Examples here include Guinea, Niger, Burundi and Eritrea among others. So in the same way, if you're asked to give characteristics, look at some of the key items in the description and you can use them as characteristics. Let's move on. Uh, right here, you see a map of, of the world and it has uh, two colors. One is green, which shows less economically developed countries. Uh, they are basically located in the south of the red line. And uh, above the line, we have more economically developed countries, and uh, these are in the Northern America and Europe. And also in the South, there is Australia and New Zealand as part of the MEDCs. So the task ahead is uh, describe the distribution of MEDCs and LEDCs, and I expect you to give names of countries in those continents. Uh, using this north-south divide map uh, we proceed to measuring development uh, measuring development is uh, a difficult task and this is because medcs which are well known to be rich uh, also have some people who are living in poverty and likewise M ledcs uh, that are known to be poor countries uh, have people who are actually rich and surprisingly living better quality of life. So what are some of the indicators of development? We're going to look at an outline and then later we'll look at them in details. We have number one, national income or the wealth of the country. We have literacy, life expectancy, and also infant mortality. So let's go ahead and look at this in details. National income is the total amount of financial resources earned by a country. So basically what you can know that uh, countries that have high national income are considered to be highly developed uh, compared to those with the low national income. However, you need to remember that this will very much depend on the population size and also on how the government is spending this money. So... Uh, Increased national income is an indicator of economic growth of a country and is also a starting point for development. Development, like we looked at in the definition, it looks at the quality of life. Uh, and this would depend on how the money is spent uh, by the government to improve people's standards of living. 
So national income is divided into two, gross domestic product, abbreviated as GDP, and gross national product, abbreviated as GNP, uh, sometimes GNI, which stands for income. So GDP is the total value of goods and services produced within a country in a year. Uh, and then gross national product or GNP is the total value of goods and services produced within a country plus earnings from foreign investments or investments abroad. So high GDP figures, like I said, would mean that the country is more developed. However, like I mentioned, this depends on uh, the national or on the population size. So, because countries have different population sizes, we it may be misleading to use GNP figures uh, to compare development between countries. And therefore, in this case, we are going to use our GNP per capita. And in this case, per capita means per person. Uh, GNP per capita is um, got by dividing GNP or divide by uh, the total population. And uh, GNP per capita shows uh, how income, how national income uh, is shared by each citizen of a country. And that means it would be a good measure. However, however, we also know that different countries have different costs of living and therefore GNP per capita figures may also be misleading uh, to make, to use them as comparisons. Uh, so what do we do in this case? There is something called uh, purchasing power parity, uh, which uh, looks at how much goods uh, can be purchased with one dollar. So if we compare country A and country B, we look at how much a dollar, which is a standard currency, can purchase. And we, if we find that country A, uh, if we find that one dollar can buy more goods in country A than in country B, then it would mean that country A is more developed. So there are still limitations of using this measure of GNP per capita or PPP uh, to compare development. And this is because it does not show how wealth is distributed among citizens. So like we said, in country A, you could be able to buy more goods with $1. But then the question is, do all people have access to these finances? Is the money distributed equally to the people? This is a question and it might be misleading to say that country with the high, with the high purchasing power parity is more developed than another. And then also another challenge here is uh, that this PPP does not show how government invests the income at its disposal to improve the quality of life. Some governments, especially in LEDCs, have resorted to spending much of their income to military uh, investments and this may not directly benefit the quality of life of people. So let's go ahead and look at some other indicators. Uh, secondly, we're going to look at life expectancy, which is the average number of years uh, people can be expected to live. So life expectancy, of course, uh, would depend on the uh, access to clean water, uh, health care, and also food availability uh, in the community. And, uh, and then number three is literacy, uh, which is the percentage of adults who can read and write. Uh, uh, first, uh, we can also think that life expectancy for countries that are well developed, they will have high life expectancy, while countries that are less developed, they will have low life expectancy. And also looking at literacy, which we have mentioned that it is the percentage of adults who can read and write, uh, it is important to note that LEDCs have very low literacy rates, uh, while uh, MEDCs have higher literacy rates. And of course, we know that with uh, many people being educated, it means that you are able to have a very good human capital. People are able to work in industries and this would increase the GDP per capita. 
And then number four, infant mortality, which is the number of children who die before one year of age in a year. Uh, what we can see from here is uh, we can compare development between countries uh, by looking at how many children die before one year of age. Of course, in LEDCs, people die uh, very... Uh, children die a lot before reaching one year. For example, in Kenya, it is 61 children per 1,000 live births, while in UK, which is a developed country, only five children per 1,000 live births. So this is a good comparison uh, for, for development between countries. However, we can also look at some other, some other measures one is access to basic services like education and healthcare, and then risk of disease, uh, HIV and AIDS, TB and other things. We also look at the government spending priorities. Sometimes I say that governments may spend more money on military than on healthcare. And then number next, we can look at how the income is distributed. Sometimes you have income inequality that money belongs to the hands of a few people so we would not say that the country is developed even though it may have higher gdp figures and then unemployment where the vast majority of people are unemployed then they cannot live a quality of life that is expected so all the indicators of development discussed have some relationship with each other uh, e.g a higher gnp per capita means that people can be able to afford uh, to pay for food, education, and electricity, which would mean they would enjoy better quality of life. Also, the country has capacity to invest in healthcare, education, and clean water supply. High level of literacy means that people are aware of the importance of a balanced diet, uh, importance of exercising, and can use uh, modern medicines. Hence, they can be able to increase their life expectancy and lastly, educated people can also get jobs in secondary and tertiary sectors, hence increasing a country's GDP. Uh, just a reminder, uh, having uh, a higher GNP per capita, uh, we said it could be an indicator that a country is highly developed. However, we can have some anomalies uh, whereby some countries with low GNP per capita, like Cuba, uh, have high access to education, people are very educated and there is easy access to medical care. So this is an anomaly which would uh, be a bit confusing on who is more developed than the other. So you're going to have an exercise that you're going to do. So this is a scatter graph, it shows uh, life expectancy uh, in years and then down here we have GNP per capita like I mentioned uh, these indicators have a relationship so this is shown on a scatter graph so the question is a study figure 9 a scatter graph which shows information about GNP per capita and life expectancy for a selection of countries so you will be able to study this diagram look at those dots and then answer the questions. Describe the relationship between GNP per capita and life expectancy shown by figure nine, which is the graph and uh, includes statistics in your answers. Explain why there is a relationship between GNP per capita and life expectancy. And this goes for five marks. This brings us to the end of lesson one of development. Please do this activity and test your rate of understanding. Thank you very much. I'll catch you in the next lesson.